Welcome back everyone. Last time we got the quest point cape and I promised that we would be doing a live video of me completing the city of Sentistin which was released the day after I put out the last episode. Here's the thing though. City of Sentistin was such an enjoyable quest and the city itself was such an amazing thing to see for the first time. I don't want to spoil it. I think everyone who's interested in the quest should do it instead of watching me do it. The amount of XP we get is decent, and we get access to four new ancient magic spells, but also we can upgrade our Pontifex Signet Ring. After Azanadra's quest, we can create a Pontifex Observation Ring by combining a Pontifex Signet Ring, a Blank Observation, and a Lapis Lazuli Gem. And then we can upgrade that ring further into the Pontifex Shadow Ring by adding a Dragonstone at an Archaeology Restoration Desk to our Observation Ring. This ring acts as tier 2 luck, gives you 1% extra divination XP, you get more chronicle fragments, rockertunities spawn every 25 seconds instead of every 35 seconds, and time sprites last longer at hotspots. We can also teleport to the Sentistin Cathedral, but as of right now, it only brings us to here. We can't actually teleport into the cathedral yet, and the reason for that is pretty obvious if you did the quest. It has to do with magic and wards preventing things from occurring. Regardless, I have a feeling this ring is going to be upgraded to tier 4 luck at some point, probably by sacrificing a luck of the dwarves to it. In other news, we got 95 dungeoneering, and that means quite a lot. First of all, we have access to the warped floors, which means we can fight a warped gulega and complete the elite demonheim tasks. We now have access to a second Gatestone via the Create Gatestone 2 and Gatestone Teleport 2 spells, which means we have two Gatestones we can create wherever we want on a floor, and a third one that we can teleport to as the Group Gatestone at any point. Usually what I do is I leave the Group Gatestone in the first room and move around the dungeon with the other two Gatestones. It'll make getting 99 a lot faster. Also, if we activate the aura, we can use it like a Bone Crusher necklace sort of a deal. Uh, it restores prayer points if you activate it and bury bones, it's kind of pointless. Finally, the secondary role effectiveness on our Ring of Kinship is increased to 100%. We can do hard mode dungeons, we get a discount from the smuggler, and we have access to the extended portion of the Brimhaven Dungeon Resource Dungeon, which contains Mithril Dragons. I used all the lamps on dungeon area except for the first one because you need level 98 in the skill you want to use a lamp on to use the lamp. So I just use that in Herblore, since Herblore is the most expensive skill I have to train that's over level 98. But also with 95 Dungeoneering, we can enter the Garajo Resource Dungeon in the Mylair section of Priftinus, which contains a Bloodwood Tree, a bunch of Divine Locations, and the Garajo, who will give us one Dungeoneering Wild card every day. Sometimes that'll be a Yak card, which will help unlock some of the recipes for Combination Potions. 95 Dungeoneering was also a roadblock for me to complete the Elite Tyrannon task set. One of the requirements of that task set is to bow to Saren while wearing the Crest of Saren, which is an item you get in Freneske by doing this thing right here where you have to click all of these pillars 80 times. I do not remember this at all, and I'm pretty sure I've done the Elite Tyrannon task set more than once. This is... I, my mind just blanked this out. Probably because it is tedious and dumb. We also needed to complete a Rush of Blood challenge at Platinum or Gold level, I believe that was, and you need 95 Slayer to do that, so we could have done this a lot sooner, we just never did. Well, here we are doing it. The reward wasn't particularly notable, but we have a Tormented Demon drop card enhancer, or whatever that is, which we're probably not going to use for a while and some Slayer VIP tickets. That's probably the most valuable thing there, is the VIP tickets. With this task set done, we now have the ability to take a portrait at the photo booth with the head of one of the eight Elven Clan leaders, probably the best unlock in the entire game, and we get double crystal blossoms harvested from the player-grown crystal tree. But we don't have a crystal acorn seed because those things are super rare and you're not guaranteed to get one until you max. It's ridiculous. The quiver now also gives us unlimited teleports to the Harmony Pillars in the Heffen District. Every day we can claim 28 free logs from Coden, averaging about 90k. There's a 50% chance not to use a charge on a most wanted card, a 5% chance not to use a charge on an attuned crystal bow or ward, damage is increased by 5% against dark beasts, and we can see Mune, and it's a pet and I don't care. We get the reward for this task set from Ellen Anterth in the Max Guild Garden. You might be wondering, how do we get into the Max Guild Garden? If we're not maxed, well you see you can get into the max guild garden if you have at least 199 or you have the quest cape. 
Now you might say, what if you complete the task set and you don't have either of those? How do you claim the reward? Aha, here's the thing. One of the requirements is to unfurl one of the banners, so you need to have at least 199 or have completed every single quest in the game to complete the elite task set. And unsurprisingly, I used all the lamps on Dungeoneering. Now we haven't actually completed any of the Falador task sets. Not the easy, not the medium, not the hard, not the elite. But we're now able to complete them all, actually. We have all the stats and all the requirements to do every single one. So I completed the easy, got the reward from uh, Redbeard Frank. The medium, got the reward from the chemist. And the hard and elite you get from Squire... I want to say Absol, but that's a Pokemon. Azrael. Azrael. I, um, I, I, I almost read that wrong. Okay. So let me explain the rewards. First of all, every tier lets you recover some prayer points. 25% for the easy, 50% for the medium, 100% for the hard, and you can restore twice per day 100% of your prayer points with the elite shield. The medium shield also increases the farming experience from the herb, flower, and allotment patches at the Falador farm by 10%. The shield from the hard task set allows Weissen, the gardener, to give you white lily seeds for each mole skin you give him. You have access to the bank deposit box in the crafting guild, and you have the ability to trade white lily seeds up to 50 per day for 100 farming experience each. Finally, the elite shield provides the same damage reduction ability as the anti-dragon shield mole against the giant mole. It does not provide protection against dragon fire, however, and we have a 5% increase to the respect gained in the artisan's workshop. Finally, when restoring prayer points in Falador Castle, we get an extra 20 points. We have the ability to convert the Falador Castle altar to a Zerosian altar by using an ancient hymnal on it. And we will always receive a mole nose drop from the giant mole, which can be traded for higher value nests. You can see why doing this task set wasn't really a priority. With those tasks out of the way, we have a bunch of XP lamps, which we can use in any skill we desire. So we're going to use every single lamp on Dungeoneering giving us a total of, I believe, 176,000 experience. We want to do the hard and elite desert tasks, which requires us to grind out a ton of bosses in the Dominion Tower. We need to kill 450 for Dreadnips to fight the Calphite Queen with, and we need to kill 500, plus do a bunch of achievements in the Dominion Tower so we can get the final banner and plant it out in the desert and get the last achievement we need. This fight you're seeing here against Vanstrom Klaus is fight 247, 250, something around there in endurance mode. And I was actually very proud I was able to get this high in endurance mode after fighting several nomads, believe it or not. Vanstrom Klaus is what did me in. Why did it do me in? Because he spammed Embrace Darkness maybe three times in a row and I just kept getting hit by it and I died. But I accumulated a lot of Dominion Factor, which allowed me to get seven more journal pages. You need a total of 20 journal pages to get the final power-ups you need to use to complete all the achievements to get the final banner that you can plant in the desert to complete the final achievement. It's... you gotta do a lot of stuff for the desert achievement set. But we did it. We got the sunshade achievement, which means we can complete the task set. When worn, the Desert Amulet 3 provides the Karis with improved passives against Calphites and Scarabites. The hit chance is increased to 25% from 15%, and the chance of triple damage is increased to 5% from 2.5%. We can convert 100 Soda Ash per day, and at all times, the Desert Amulet 3 increases our Mage Arena discount to 10%. Allows us to claim 30 potato cactuses from the weird old man. The cactus patches are now disease free and will give double cactus spines and potato cacti when harvested. We get double charges when recharging Pharaoh's scepters and the scepter of the gods. We have a reduced chance of mummies and scarab swarms spawning in pyramid plunder. The desert phoenix can now be continuously auto pickpocketed. And the scepter of the gods now has a charge cap of 60 charges. The desert amulet 4 gives us the ability to reroll the dominion tower's reward chest but we're never going to do that because we're probably never going to go back to the Dominion Tower. But we also have a 20% chance to create a 4-dose Super Anti-Fire Potion instead of a 3-dose while in the desert. We can convert 150 Soda Ash per day, and we have unlimited teleports to the Ruins of Uzer. Finally, we get two Phoenix Feathers plucked at once from the Desert Phoenix. The Clay Golem will enhance the Ancient Staff, making it a Tier 75 weapon with a prayer bonus. We have access to the Softenum Red Sandstone Mine, providing an additional 25 Red Sandstone per day. A Ligra Knight in the quarry will buy granite for 20% the grant exchange value. We can claim 40 potato cactus from the weird old man. Pyramid tops will now sell for 10,000 coins at Simon Templeton, and we have the ability to see Mune 
which I couldn't care less about. And unsurprisingly, I used the XP lamps on Dungeoneering. I've had a Master Clue sitting in my bank for quite some time. It's the one that requires the Enhanced Yak Twee Stick, the Dagon High Hat, and an Amulet of Ranging. Didn't have an Enhanced Yak Twee Stick. Well, I decided to bite the bullet and just go ahead and enhance it. So we can finally do this clue and then do the rest of our Master Clues that we have sitting in our bag of Karos, or Karos bag, in Karos's big old sack. I opened nine Master Clues. I don't think I need to show you the actual unboxing for you to believe me. More than a third of the profit from these clues came from Hydrix Bolt Tips. Hydrix Bolt Tips are ridiculously expensive. It's it's amazing. I mean, I, I'm not complaining. I like the 16 and a half mil from Nine Clues. To celebrate the money, and to celebrate the fact that I got two of Masket Sand from one Asheron Mammoth task that I forgot to record, we're going to spend it on Cleansing Crystals and get ourselves 99 Prayer. The Prayer Skill Cape basically allows your home altar to act like the Chaos Altar. You don't have to light any of the burners for it to give you the maximum XP. I forgot to record myself buying this cape, but if you're curious, you get it from Brother Jared in the Edgeville Monastery. We've been sitting on 97 Hunter for quite a while. We got the level a while ago when we were hunting for a few Dragon Maddocks so we can level Archaeology. I didn't want to buy them, I just wanted to see how long it would take for me to get one, and I ended up having to hunt something like 350 dinosaurs to get one. And then I got another four by hunting another 100 dinosaurs. But I recently got enough fragments to create one of the three outfits of the Nature Sentinel Elite Woodcutting Outfit set. And I only need a few more fragments, about 3,000 more fragments, to make the last piece I need so we can get the Elite Nature Sentinel outfit, which is the combination of all three outfits. We can get those fragments from cutting these trees in Big Game Hunter. So I figured, let's kill two dinosaurs with one stone. We'll cut these trees, get the last outfit piece we need, and get close to 99 Hunter. Maybe even get 99 Hunter, who knows? You know, I actually recorded all of my kills. And I was going to have a huge montage of all of the loot I got from all of these dinosaurs. But I don't want the video to be an extra 7 minutes long just so you can see basically the same loot for every single kill. I mean, in 200 kills you're probably only going to see maybe one or two Dragomatics and an unchecked dinosaur. So it's not super interesting. We're just going to skip to the end so you can see all the loot that we got. But as an intermission, we did get enough fragments to make the Nature Sentinel outfit. What's nice about the outfit is that it allows you to once per day spawn an evil tree that you can cut down. It's sort of like a divine location and you can just do it whenever you want from your own outfit every single day. I think it gives you about 30,000 XP. So we're definitely going to do this every single day just for some easy woodcutting XP. Since woodcutting can be pretty slow, we combine this with divine locations, with the divine yew trees, and we can probably get around 150,000 woodcutting XP every day without actually ever having to go to any trees. Well, I was pretty far into 98 Hunter by the time I was able to finish the outfit, so I figured let's go the rest of the way and get 99. Tier 2 dinosaurs certainly aren't the best XP for Hunter. Tier 3 dinosaurs are pretty good XP, but I wanted to make some money, and honestly, Big Game Hunter is kind of enjoyable. I I like it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very meditative. Yeah, I like Big Game Hunter. It's definitely better than the other ways of training Hunter, which is just a tedious place a trap, pick up a trap, place a trap, pick up a trap, place a trap, pick up a trap. Anyway, here's the loot. We got one Dragomatic and one unchecked Bagrata Rex, but most of the money came from the meat. We got about 25 mil from Corbicula Rex meat, 16 and a half mil from the Ascheatops meat? I think that's what it was, or is it the Spicati Ascheatops or Apatosaur? I can't remember which one it is. It's the tier two dinosaurs. The tier two dinosaurs give very expensive meat. And that's because the tier 2 dinosaur meat is used to hunt the tier 3 dinosaurs, which give more XP and give you a chance to get pieces of the pterosaur maul. This is where you get the hunter skill cape. Now, when you read the effect of the hunter skill cape, it seems a little weird. The way it's worded is strange. It says, allows you to place your next trap in the next cycle. I'm not sure what they mean by that, but the wiki says that the cape allows you to place your next trap instantly. So I assume that means... You place one trap with a certain amount of ticks and the next one goes up instantly. You place another with a certain amount of ticks and the next one is instant. We made some good progress in this episode. I've also opted to change the settings of my skill tab so that all of the max level skills get a nice little yellow highlight. So we can see, hey, this is this is where we're going. This is, this is what we have left. This is what we've accomplished and this is what we have left. 
for maxing. So we got 99 Hunter and 99 Prayer and completed a bunch of achievement sets. I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good week. Or however long it took me to film all this. I've also got some Ascension Shards here. This should be enough Ascension Shards to get 99 Fletching. I just we need to actually fletch them. It cost me a bit over 20 mil to buy all these, and once I craft them into bolts, factoring in the extra 10% I get from portable crafters, I should be able to sell them all back for about 18-ish mil, maybe 15 mil, something around there. It's uh, gonna end up costing me about 7 mil to go from partway through 95 to 99. It shouldn't take that long. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.